The people of Sebring are pretty used to death. They don't call Florida heaven's waiting room for nothing. But most of Sebring's retirees pass away at home or in a nursing facility or at a hospital surrounded by family and friends. For Leo and Hazel Gleese, however, the end wasn't nearly so peaceful. January 3rd, 1995 was a typical day in Sebring. The morning was bright and crisp, and the forecast called for a sunny afternoon with temperatures approaching 75. That morning, Reverend Canning asked Fountain of Life member Pauline Cook to drive him around town to run some errands while his car was in the shop. As they approached a shopping center on Highway 27, the pastor asked Pauline to pull over. He had something to tell her, something that neither she nor Sebring would ever forget. He proceeded to say, you know, I, yesterday I went over to uh, mom and dad's, which is what he termed the Gleases, and he said, uh, I knocked on the door and I didn't get an answer. I went in, wasn't anybody sitting there. So I just hollered, I said, mom, dad, it's me. I'm putting your stuff on the table and uh, I'll be at the church. No answer. He said, I called out to mom and I didn't get a response from mom. So he went over to mom's room. Reached down and I lifted her up and, and I said, Mom, Mom, you all right? Still no answer. So then I started getting scared and I hollered, Dad, Mom's fallen and got hurt. Of course, what no answer. So I couldn't feel any pulse. I said, oh, well, they must be okay now. I said, did the ambulance come and get them and are they doing okay? And, uh, he hesitated for a while, and then he said to me, Pauline, don't you understand what I'm trying to say to you? I'm trying to tell you they are dead. Pauline quickly put her car in gear and made a beeline for the Sebring police station. When they got there, Reverend Canning went inside. There was a man in the lobby, front lobby, wanting to report the deaths of two people, which right off the bat is unusual. I asked him to tell us what happened. His demeanor was almost like an act. He was upset one minute. Uh, he wasn't the next. Uh, appeared that he was crying, but there were no tears and that sort of thing. Despite Reverend Canning's odd behavior, Officer Carr asked the minister to accompany him to the Gleases. The pastor refused and remained in the station lobby. After getting the address from the Reverend, Stephen Carr and a fellow officer raced to the Gleese's small house. There they encountered a scene that would leave a deep scar on Sebring for many years. We found Leo laying on the floor right there in front of the door, and there was a large pool of blood around his head. We found Hazel lying on the kitchen floor, and you could tell the struggle had taken place. There were things knocked off the table, fruit laying on the floor, and blood around her head also. The Lord may not have watched over Leo and Hazel, but apparently he was protecting their property. There was no evidence of a robbery at their home. Robbery was quickly ruled out. When we went over the crime scene, uh, there was plenty of jewelry and valuable items within the house that remained untouched. The same could not be said for Reverend Canning's arms and hands. We noticed that uh, he had a series of scratches uh, on his uh, left arm where he normally wore a watch. There was a tan line, but there was no watch. And just above that tan line on the forearm, there was a scratch. Uh, there was also a, uh, a scratch on the inside of his left palm that we thought was peculiar. It kind of looked like a fingernail mark to us. Asked by detectives about his injuries, the Reverend seemed to have a perfectly reasonable explanation for the scratches. He explained that by saying, well, we're building this new church and I was doing some, putting in some roof tiles, and I got scratched on my hands while, while doing that. Investigators were dubious, and it wasn't just the scratches. Canning had waited a full 24 hours to tell anyone about his discovery of the crime. There was just one question on the minds of everyone in Sebring. Why? I don't know if it's because of watching 
Murder, She Wrote, Too Much, or whatever. But anyway, I got paranoid. And the first thought that came through my mind is, oh my God, there ain't a person here that can testify that I did not do this. Just days after Hazel was laid to rest, and with the case going nowhere, Detective Carr got a tip. A member of Fountain of Life suggested that police take a look at some garbage he had helped Reverend Cannon clear from the church construction site. Suddenly, the case swung into high gear. Leo Gleese pretty much spent 90% of his time in his favorite chair. We found pieces of the chair, blood evidence, the Gleese's mail, and other items that came from the Gleese's house. And the paper, some of the paper products had John Canning's fingerprints on them. They also found a bloody white with blue stripes shirt that Canning had worn. The new evidence was harder to explain away than a few random scratches. And for the first time, Reverend Canning didn't even try. I just grabbed a shirt there, so I put it on to, to go, go back to the house with, and I took that shirt that I had, put it in the trash bag, and set it out by the dumpster. Now, I have absolutely no idea how anything else got there. It may not have been a burning bush, but Sebring's finest now had physical evidence linking Reverend Canning to the murder of Leo and Hazel. Now all they needed was a motive. After digging through the trash, investigators turned their attention to John Canning's financial records. When we started examining his bank accounts, we found um, increases in deposits in the thousands of dollars, well above uh, the means that he was uh, uh, living by. Where had the money come from? A close examination of Canning's bank account showed that the minister had gotten quite a bit wealthier since the Gleases gave him their power of attorney. That money was taken from the Gleases by a number of ways. The Gleases had a second home on, on Heideke Street in Sebring. The house sold for somewhere in the area of $30,000. Of that $30,000, uh, we were able to show that uh, Canning deposited somewhere in the area of uh, uh, nine dollars to $10,000 in his personal accounts. On March 3rd, 1995, John Canning was arrested for the murder of Leo and Hazel Gleese. Still, there were lots of people in Sebring who knew the cops had the wrong man. I felt that he was a genuine person. I felt that he heard from God, that he taught the word. No, he is not guilty. He was too caring a person to ever hurt anybody. In exchange for the state dropping his request for the death penalty, he would plead guilty. Not because he had really murdered Leo and Hazel, but because the stress and cost of a full trial would be too much for his family. The reason I pleaded guilty was there were several uh, things that uh, led me to believe that I was not going to get a fair trial. My wife had heart problems, and the stress factor that she was under along with the rest of the family and myself, but my main concern was her. He said, I know I didn't do it. They know I didn't do it. He says, but God has a reason for everything he does. If God has a reason for me being in jail, then that's where I'll go. And that's where he went to serve a life sentence for murder. As far as Sebring was concerned, many people were happy that justice had been served, even if the Reverend didn't fully admit his guilt. I don't think there was that big sense of relief, like uh, all of a sudden everything's better. It was, thank God no one's out there killing more people. Still, for some people, especially those close to Leo and Hazel, the pain caused by the brutal murders will never be over. As Christians, I know we're supposed to forgive and let God take care of him on Judgment Day, because we all have to answer on Judgment Day. But I still got a lot of praying to do on that. He took away our mom and pop of our church in, in a brutal, brutal way. So it, it hurts. As for Reverend Canning, life behind bars has given him plenty of time to work on his ministry and wait for redemption. God could have at any time 
intervened, cleared my name, and stopped it. For reasons only known to him, he didn't. Of course, maybe the reason God wants Reverend Canning in jail is because he's guilty of sin. But that's between the two of them.